So in this video, I want to show you how we can use the pivoting of columns to make our work a little bit easier. So I'm looking at sales order processing data from GP, and I really only want to look at things that post the invoices and return. So I already uh, limited my items here. So the first thing I'm going to do is come in and get rid of my voids. So I'll unmark if it's voided. And then I'm going to come into the posting status and only include the things that are posted. And now I'm going to remove these two columns and I can remove them because the filtering of those columns occurred before the removal. So it does everything in those applied steps. So now if I look over at my soft type, I'm only seeing invoices and returns because those are the only things that can actually post. So what I want to do now, I only have one number column set up right now. I have extended price and I have my, um, that's the only a number I'm dealing with. So I'm going to just take that and move that to the end right now, just for simplicity purposes. You'll see why in just a moment. And on the soft type, I'm going to route, uh, right mouse click on that. And I'm going to duplicate the column, which will put it at the end. So what I want to do is I'm going to come in and if it's a return, I want it to appear as a negative amount and then leave my invoices as positive because we know that the data is just stored as documents and it's not like the net effect on our sales. So I want to do this now. So what I'm going to do, let me just bring that over here. I'm going to highlight the, the type column and I'm going to highlight the price column. And then up on transform, I'm going to choose pivot column. So it'll pivot my column and it's asking me which one's the values. It's assuming it's the extended price and it is, and I'll click OK. So now you can see I have two columns, one for invoice and one for return, which is pretty cool. Now you'll notice that if it's a return though, it says null and the same would be true if it's a return, the invoice amount would be null. So we need to remove those nulls and make them zeros. So I'm going to highlight uh, the start with the invoice column and then I'm going to choose replace values and I'll replace that value null with zero. And I'll do exactly the same thing for return. Replace the value of null for a zero. And that way I don't have a null field. I have a zero if it's a zero. Now on the returns field, I want the returns amount to be negative. So again, under transform, it knows it's a number. So the number areas are um, highlighted or made available for me. I just want to do a simple multiply. So I'll choose standard and multiply. And I'm going to multiply this column times minus one. And now if I look at the amounts and returns, you can see they're negatives. And if I look at amounts for invoices, you could see they're positive. So I'm going to click OK. So now I've got those numbers set up. What I'm going to do now is go back through and um, I could either unpivot or I can, in this case, I still have my original document type. What I'm going to do is just add a column that adds those two together. So we'll call it um, total price. And I'm just going to select those two new columns I added, invoice plus return. And I'm going to click OK. And now I have this total price column, which includes the negatives and the positives. I don't need anything with a zero there, so I'm going to get rid of that. And now I'll get rid of these two columns here. So just like on the voids, the fact that I've already used those in calculation, they're all set. And now I have my total price that shows me negatives for return and positives for invoices. Hope this helps.